Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for April 4th, 2012. On this week's show, a nearly lightless laser has a bright future, nanostars are superior for SIRS, laser mixing generates multi-frequency light, a public-private photonics partnership in Europe gets support, and new research projects could boost optical communications. A new laser based on the engineering technique of phased arrays is super radiant in a steady state with fewer than one intracavity photon. The prototype demonstrated at GILA, a joint institute of NIST and the University of Colorado Boulder, relies on a million rubidium atoms to produce a dim beam of deep red laser light. The beam is extremely dim, about a million times dimmer than a laser pointer, but is still brighter than expected from the ordinary emissions of individual atoms. An ordinary laser relies on millions of photons ricocheting back and forth between two mirrors, striking atoms in the lasing material and generating more photons to build up intense light. That doesn't happen in the new laser because the photons aren't there long enough. Instead, less than one photon sticks around between the mirrors. This type of laser could boost the performance of the most advanced atomic clocks, but first it would need to be recreated using atoms that are better suited to that purpose, such as strontium. It could also improve communications and navigation systems, as well as space-based astronomical instruments. The work appears in Nature. Starfruit-shaped gold nanorods can strengthen applications that rely on surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy, or SIRS. Rice University scientists developed the new particles using a chemical bath. In 2008, seed particles containing pure gold nanorods with pentagonal cross-sections were developed in the same lab. They discovered that about 24 hours after the nanorods were mixed in a chemical solution, the particles plumped in size. When observed under an electron microscope, they looked like star-shaped pillow stacks. The researchers saw that the particles gave back 25 times stronger signals when compared with smooth surface print nanorods. This characteristic could make it possible to detect minute amounts of organic molecules, including biomarkers and DNA, for particular diseases. Ongoing experiments will help characterize the nanowire's ability to transmit a plasmonic signal, which could be useful for waveguides and other optoelectronic devices. The study was published online in Langmere. At the Photonics 21 annual meeting on March 28th in Brussels, European Commission Vice President Nelly Cruz announced her support in creating a photonics public-private partnership to combat the economic crisis in Europe and to secure Europe's leading position in the photonics industry. The priorities of the Photonics PPP are strengthening European industrial leadership, improving Europe's innovation potential and competitiveness in photonics, and providing technology-based solutions to the crises Europe is facing. It will be created within the Horizon 2020 framework together with Photonics 21, the platform of the European photonics industry. Horizon 2020 is the EU's new program for research and innovation as part of the drive to create new growth and jobs. It will run from 2014 through 2020 and have an 80 billion euro budget. The European photonics industry is showing its agreement by committing to a fourfold leverage of public funding, which will result in a total investment of 7 billion euro and offer an additional 70,000 to 100,000 high level jobs in the photonics industry over the next seven years. A groundbreaking laser mixing technique can manipulate electron hole collisions to create many frequencies of light simultaneously, a mechanism for ultrafast light modulation with potential applications in high speed optical communications. Researchers at the University of California, Santa Barbara, said it's fairly routine to mix the lasers and get one or two new frequencies, but to see up to 11 different frequencies is an exciting phenomenon they've never seen before. In terms of real world applications, the technique can be used to transmit more information at a faster rate by multiplexing, or it can be used for high speed frequency modulation for a faster internet. Because the laser currently used is the size of a building, the researchers are forced to come up with a more practical way to implement these findings. One solution is to use a transistor that modulates in the near infrared to produce strong terahertz fields akin to those of the free electron laser. The unique tool gives them a big advantage for exploring the properties of fundamental materials, the team said. The research appears online in Nature. So there's a lot of communications related research this week. Yeah, and uh, there are several other stories we haven't even mentioned yet. Like the laser fabricated on silicon at A-Star Data Storage Institute. Yes, and ring resonators at U-Maryland that work with single photons, uh, and they could be incorporated into micro-optical diodes. They might even replace their electronic counterparts for quantum information. And also the discovery of the first non-metal material to support surface plasmons, which could lead to new optoelectronic devices. Yeah, definitely lots of interesting research news this week. For details on these stories and all of the other stories we've covered this week, uh, visit photonics.com. 
Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the industry's only weekly newscast. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters.photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. We are working on uh, chemical sensing inside. Um, the idea is to use it in vivo. For and we use different optical methods such as fluorescence microscopy and also photoacoustics. So we do chemical sensing in in animal models. So that's the application. Finally, it can be applied for tumor diagnostics and treatment, but that's the long-term goal. Thank you.